have talked with Dr. Akram. I just uh, met uh, Professor Suranjit uh, Senevaratna just before my program, before we go going to go live. I just want to talk to him quickly about COVID-19 pregnancy and breastfeeding. Effects of COVID-19 on pregnancy and breastfeeding. Thank you very much, uh, Suranjit to uh, agree uh, to record this small video for especially for pregnant mothers and children. Um, what do you think about the effects of COVID-19 on pregnancy and breastfeeding? Okay, th thanks Akram. Are they more prone to getting COVID? Is a person who is pregnant more prone? No, it is not. They are not more prone to getting COVID. However, if they get COVID, that is the infection with the SARS-CoV-2, virus that we all know about, if they get COVID, about 10% can develop very severe disease. And that is the important thing for us to remember because during pregnancy, if they develop severe disease, it can have an impact on both the mother and the baby and can lead to uh, quite a number of consequences if we don't prevent the person getting COVID. Yes, getting COVID. Is there any higher risk of getting miscarriages with uh, COVID? There is a uh, miscarriage rate has not been found to be significantly high, but the premature labor and premature births have been found to be increased to a great extent in patients, in people uh, who have been infected with COVID, that is preg during pregnancy. What advice and recommendations you give for pregnant mothers? So the usual advice which you give to anyone as you know, social distancing, wearing masks, washing hands and the usual, usual processes that you would advise anyone. After 28 weeks, the person is, uh, is uh, recommended to work from home rather than unless they have to go in. But the, the, recommendations to work from home and with regards to the vaccine it is that especially if the person is in the first four groups as, as uh, if the person is uh, has to get the vaccine is a, if uh, the vaccine is indicated the recommendation is to go ahead and get the vaccine uh, even if the person is pregnant so who are the people who uh, get recommendation to get vaccine even during the pregnancy? So it's people who has a high risk of uh, coming in contact with a COVID patient, a, COVID, a person who is positive with COVID or uh, a COVID patients, healthcare workers, social care workers, etc. Or who is someone who is in the high risk uh, group that uh, we would anyway give the vaccine. So if those if the pregnant lady is in one of those groups, the recommendation is to go ahead and get the vaccine. Okay. Transmission, transmission from mother to newborn. Very good, yeah. So th that is, uh, uh, unlike uh, conditions such as Zika, where the transplacental uh, spread was qu uh, quite high and uh, during pregnancy was high, in COVID for good, uh, uh, it's a good sign that uh, Transplacental spread has been limited. There are some cases, rare cases, but it has not been a very high thing. But after delivery, uh, you'd have to take precautions because uh, if uh, adequate precautions are not taken, then you will find that the uh, mother, who is, if she is positive, can transmit it to the baby. So, if the mother is um, COVID positive, yeah. can she breastfeed the child? Yes, it, uh, so that is recommended, uh, but the uh, important uh, aspects of uh, you know wearing masks washing the hands etc should be recommended uh, and those should be taken seriously and the baby can be breastfed can the uh, virus be uh, transmitted through the milk uh, no uh, uh, because through the milk the virus will get destroyed in the in the uh, in the uh, when they take it in the milk in the baby, so that has not been demonstrated as sort of breastfeeding giving rise to the virus, uh, giving rise to viral infection has not been demonstrated. Okay, uh, if the virus can it get transmitted from mom's breast to the child? Exactly, so that is why uh, you would uh, you would uh, recommend a proper sort of the training techniques etc to ensure that the baby is not exposed to the virus because 
the danger would be the mom, if they don't wear a mask, transmit it to the baby when the baby is closed at the breast. Uh, so that, that is the important, and then uh, hand washing, etc., to ensure that there is no okay. risk to a virus so on the skin. Still, they don't have to extract the milk and give it in the bottle. Uh, that, that has been uh, used in certain instances, but as a process, you would uh, recommend breastfeeding, and but some uh, some uh, ladies would want to extract, and someone else can give it. But you would uh, you would recommend breastfeeding. Breastfeeding, okay. So the mums can still have vaccines. Yes, as we as we said. Can the vaccine affect the baby somehow? No, it can't. So the uh, it, the vaccine can't affect the baby. Given to the mom who is breastfeeding, it can't affect the baby. It, it, it won't find any sort of uh, viral proteins going across in the breast. There, even if it be goes, it will be destroyed. The important thing is some antibodies that are formed. If by chance if the breastfeeding is for a long period of time, some antibodies can be transmitted in the breast and would, could be protective to the baby. So that could be protective to the baby, the baby yes, through, the, through the breast milk? Yeah. Okay, so the baby, once they're born, you know, there's a small, uh, uh, after a few days, the immunity drops down, so there's a small phase. What about that period? Will it be um, dangerous for the uh, baby? Yes, I, I think the, uh, it takes time for the immune system to mature in a baby. That's the important thing, and that is why during the first two, to first up to about six months, it's the maternal, the mother's uh, immunoglobulins that has gone across to the baby that protects the baby and keeps the baby healthy. So the uh, important thing is during that initial period that uh, you must not get the people, even if they have uh, sort of, uh, if the mother is getting any help, they must ensure that those people have to take all the precautions because the baby can be prone to getting uh, the infection during that period because they don't have a very mature immune system during that period. Thank you, so I think that so you still advise breastfeeding is the best method because the uh, antibodies get get. Uh, that is one one of the process because. Yeah. Say if you get the vaccine today, it will take at least about a week or two weeks for the antibodies to form. So oh. that is the important thing. So if the mother has had the uh, vaccine and has antibodies, one important thing is if she had it in pregnancy, the IgG antibody can go across the placenta to the baby. And secondly, if the mother has the antibodies, uh, then that antibody can go across to the baby and be protected to the baby. Be protected to the baby. Yes. Okay. The mothers who can, who don't have vaccine during the pregnancy, yeah. when can they have vaccine safely afterwards? Uh, do, 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 I mean, they can have it uh, pre previous. So this this has been changing over the period of time because they said you know wait some time and then get the vaccine. But now the recommendation is go ahead if you are in that group because that's an important aspect because if the person is in that. Uh, uh, the high risk group which, uh, for which vaccines are recommended, then it is to go ahead and get the vaccine because for the mother getting the vaccine, the baby is not going to get COVID or that, that would be any sort of uh, disease that the, the baby would get from that test. So whenever they've been offered, they can have absolutely, the vaccine? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, do the babies, do they need vaccine at some point? Uh, so at the moment, it is not because children under the age of 18 are not uh, offered the vaccine because the trials were uh, initially done in the sort of between 18 and 55 and over 55 in the uh, older population where a certain group of people were including the trials. The, this is the big problem that a lot of people are sort of not happy is that pregnant ladies were not included in the trials and that, that is a big issue because uh, I mean say in a, in a country like the US you have 3.2 million births per year and you know that's a big big population of uh, uh, pregnant ladies not being included in the trials and that there is a move towards getting governments to recognize that and include uh, 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 pregnant uh, women in th such trials so that they would also protect the rather than just, just uh, indicating that you know we don't have data or we are giving the uh, recommendations on non-trial basis. So children at the moment trials are being, are being taken by the different uh, uh, vaccine manufacturers uh, to include uh, there are trials going on in children now. First it is up to about the age of uh, uh, up to the age of about 15 and then pubescent children. Uh, those, once we get the uh, data, then uh, I mean the decision will be made regarding vaccination of children. But uh, at the moment, babies are not vaccinated. No. 
Okay. Thank you very much, Suranji, for just giving this really right facts for our mothers who are pregnant and the, and the babies. And uh, this is amazing. And I hope to see you uh, soon in the main program. We're going to talk mainly about vaccine. So um, until then, our viewers going to ha be ha very happy with your facts and findings you gave us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.